Hello and thanks for joining me today here on the channel. Now of course this channel is all about nightscape photography but a big part of what I do is sitting at my desk editing the images that I've captured out there under the stars. So for the past couple of years I've been using a Windows HP brand Omen laptop for my editing. Now it's really good but I do find the small laptop screens are quite unsuitable and quite unreliable for accurate editing. So I always connect to a larger monitor for all of the work that I do. So in this video I want to show you a couple of computer monitors I've been using for a while now to get the best possible results with my editing. Over the years I've used all sorts of monitors. Some have been great while others, well, they left a fair bit to be desired. Well, after having a chat with BenQ Australia, they sent me one of their top monitors to check out to see if I'd like it. Now, unfortunately, I do have to send it back when I'm done. But anyway, let's check it out. All right, so this is the door to my office. So let's get in there and see what we can find. This is the PD3220U from BenQ. It's a designer professional monitor, which is 31.5 inches. It's a 4K Ultra HD screen and is designed with the professional in mind. But is it any good, especially for the kind of work I do as an astro landscape photographer? Well, let's take a closer look. Some of the highlights include two Thunderbolt 3 connectivity ports. This enables you to daisy chain your computer to this monitor through to another monitor. You've got a KVM switch, which also allows you to connect to different systems using the one screen. And you can switch between those using the supplied hotkey puck. Now, as well as the display, you do need to have a good quality stand. And this is one feature I was really pleased about with this monitor because it's one of the best I've actually ever used on a monitor. It has that firm metal base and then this metal arm which literally just sits on top. It's really simple to put together. Slot it on top and then from underneath. You can just turn the screw to tighten it. It feels very firm and rigid and as you can see there's a square template which the display literally just hooks onto and then clicks into place. Now it couldn't be easier and if you want to remove the display there's a button to press in and again just pull the display out and it comes off just like a breeze. A very simple operation indeed. When that display is attached to the stand there's a real confidence in the grip that it gives. This thing is not going to move. It's very stable on my desk and I also really like the one-handed operation. It's quite simple to do and you can make most movements like this. There's a, a 20 degree tilt forwards and backwards and there's also 150 millimeters of movement up and down which I found to be plenty. There's also quite a bit of sideways swivel without having to reposition the base plate and I like that as well. The stand also allows a pivot of 90 degrees to give you that vertical setup. Now, I personally never use it that way, but if that's something that you need to do, you can do it without undoing any screws or, or anything else for that matter. Now, the panel itself looks great. It's not the thinnest of bezels, and it's certainly not the thinnest of displays. I think it's a bit thicker because it has that the power unit built into the back of it. But that means you only have to have a single power cable plugged in and you don't have to have a big external power brick. This monitor has some of the best connectivity that I've seen for a monitor in its class with two HDMI 2. There's a DisplayPort 1.4 and three USB 3.1 downstream ports and one USB 3.1 up. There's also a USB Type-C downstream just for data and also two USB-C Thunderbolt ports. One giving power delivery to 85 watts and the other one giving power delivery also of 15 watts. On the side there's also a 3.5mm headphone port so that you can easily connect your headphones on the back 
to the bottom rear is the power switch and also the joystick toggle as well as two programmable buttons. Now this is the hotkey puck which is a really clever device. It allows you to switch between the different functions as well as switching between different systems. It has the dial key, the rotation key, the return key and three single programmable functions and this effectively allows you to customize shortcuts for your preferred features. You can also do things such as adjust the brightness and contrast and volume all through the hotkey puck. It really is very smart. Now setting up and plugging in your cables is quite simple. You can literally rotate the monitor and then plug them in and rotate it back to where you want it to be. I love that feature. Now as mentioned this is a professional grade monitor and we find multiple picture modes. There are about 13 different modes that you can select and there'll always be one that's completely right for whatever our particular usage may be. But another thing to remember is that this monitor is pre-calibrated before it arrives to you which means that you can use it straight out of the box without too much fussing around. So I have to send this 32 inch monitor back to BenQ this week so I was keen to compare this with another BenQ model that I've been using for a while. So here they are side by side. The smaller BenQ monitor here is the SW271C and it's a 27 inch screen. It has incredible color management features and it's actually a really solid beast and is perfect for people like myself who specialize in photography. It has pretty much all the same features as the 32 inch model but even more accurate 99% Adobe RGB color gamut. Now this one also comes pre-calibrated from the factory and there's an attached individual calibration report included with it. I reckon that's pretty cool. So my normal workflow is to have dual monitors and this works best for my video editing as well as my photos. I like to spread things right across to a fairly wide uh, surface area uh, and I like to separate the various windows in Photoshop across the two screens. Now looking at the two monitors I can't see any difference at all in the pictures displayed. So that indicates a very high quality indeed in this 32 inch model comparing to the probably higher quality 27 inch screen I've got here. Now I have a lot of professional photographer friends who use this BNQ 27 inch monitor with their photo editing so it's a great screen to compare with. The BenQ 27 inch model does come with a supplied sunshield but I don't tend to use that at all. Having said that if you have a lot of stray light in your office then it's a really good option to have. Now I've edited quite a number of images with these two monitors in the time I've had them and I love the quality of output. I've had no problem with printed images and as you know I do that quite a bit. All of my images are sent out to a lab to print and they're always quite large. I've never had reason to complain about photo quality at all. When it comes to editing my nightscape images I'm looking for a number of things. I've already listed a heap of these in the features mentioned earlier but I do want to mention a couple of extras here. Firstly I like a screen that has a very flexible viewing angle there's nothing worse than losing color and definition when you move a little off center when viewing the screen. Now thankfully both of these are excellent in this regard. I also find the anti-glare on these screens to be excellent. Now as well as that flexibility in resolution. Now it may surprise you to know that I don't always use these screens in 4K mode. I really like editing in 2K and especially when compiling uh, Word documents, PDFs or spreadsheets that's a much better resolution for my eyes. Also to be honest most of my videos are still shot and edited in 1080p so it's a lot quicker and easier on my computer hardware to use the lower resolution. It just makes everything show a little larger. 
So I guess it's like everything else with equipment, whether it be uh, cameras, computers, or accessories of any sort. Once I find a product that I like and that fits in with my workflow, I just stick with it and get on with the job of creating images and artwork that best represents my passion for what I do. You know, there are plenty of great products out there, but I really like these ones. It's as simple as that. So there you have it. I'll actually be sad to see this screen go back to BenQ, and I do thank them for sending it out to me to have a go at. You can see the links to these products in the description below. So thanks again for watching today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. You have a fantastic week.